Shalom, shalom. Karibuni sana to today's broadcast. My name is John Mwangi. I would like to invite and welcome you to like, subscribe, and follow Slice of Today's social media platforms. That is Slice of Today in Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Telegram. Slice underscore of today in Instagram. At the end of this broadcast, you shall see an invitation from my brother for you to be added to Slice of Today WhatsApp group. You can also download Slice of Today app from Google Play Store or subscribe your email to Slice of Today WordPress post. So as long as it's today, you shall be getting content. I hope that you are having a blessed time anywhere you are in the world here in Kenya. We are having ex experiencing rains in different parts. And so it's a bit cold. So I hope that it is being a blessing. Na hai sababishi kugonjeka. Last week, I began a teaching which I had entitled, Let's Create. I explained in two bits why the title, Let's Create, and we, uh, I, I shared, yeah, it's a prophetic word that God gave to me at the beginning of this year, actually, to be exact, in January, January 1. So it is coming from the book of Genesis. Now, last week, we did Genesis chapter number 1. This week, we are doing Genesis chapter number two. Now, what is this that God wants you and me to understand? What is this prophetic word that he is sharing with the body of Christ? Let's pray. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you because of another opportunity to be found in your courts, hearing even and receiving your word. Your word is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, to the penetrating of soul and spirit, born and marrow. Thank you because Abba Father, it shall have its full effect in my life. I shall live an improved life. I shall live an elevated life. And thank you because the, illumin the illumination that comes through your word shall be my inheritance. And I make this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's proceed. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Now, I love how it's, 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 it's proceeding. Now, this is the beginning of a new chapter. Uh, actually, they are the ones who did the separation and the numbering. Thus, the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. So, kili ambacho mungu alikuwa meanzisha, alikuwa memaliza. Now, bada ya kumaliza, it is not in God's plan for you and me after we had accomplished to bid this empire, to build what we have been called and raised and born to do. That we die so when it is done so it means remember this is the onset of the bible this is actually genesis this is the second chapter there are a lot of chapters to follow that's the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them using a prophetic word using a scripture that you had read using maybe even a, a, a visitation from the angelic the bible's the Bible is teaching us, God is teaching us, the Holy Spirit is teaching us, Yakwamba, for it to come to manifestation, for you to complete it. Now, Sam Yakwamba, what I had seen in my vision, it's actually this one. I was reading the book by Pastor Rita Lai, that is the wife to Pastor Lai of JCC, and I actually have always desired actually to come across that book, and my mentor uh, is. Uh, bought one for me, uh, I celebrate him for that. I make a soul for my shayangu. And the book says Yakwamba Pastor Lai received a vision of a house of God full of people, every race, every age, lifting their hands and celebrating God, worshipping God. And by the end of them constructing their mega sanctuary, when they look back at it, actually in the book they record, Yakwamba, you have to travel, I think it's almost 15 kilometers for you to see the entire thing. You can't see it, Ukiwa, on site. You have to travel almost 15 kilometers. The one Ikiwa Yote. Ukiwa Karib, you will only see our face. So you can imagine the vision bearer, carrier. Kili ambacho alikuwa meyona kwa mafikira yake. Anajaribu kui put on paper so that even others can understand because he can't quite show them their dream. And then it is being constructed by men. Um, I love this. The Bible calls, uh, there is a part where it says feeble hands. Watu wanyonge, watu ambao pegini hata awawezi, they'll have to try and come close to it. So the Bible says thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. 
And on the seventh day, God finished his work and that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, God rested from all his work that he had made. God did the construction in six days. On the seventh, he had rested. Think about it. It's actually God who made it seven days in a week. He could have constructed it maybe for eight days and then he rested on the nine. We will be doing nine, 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 nine. Like kidney, he constructed in six, rested on the seventh. Hence, that's why and that's where we get actually the days of the week. But the days that he did the creative, together that they, with the day that he rested, all of them are actually equal. Kili ambacho uwezi maliza na siku sita, usichukua ya mungu, kisema ya kuamba, nikiongeza hii ya mungu, nikitumia hii ya mungu, nitamaliza kili ambacho nilikuwa nataka kufanya. It's the same principle with our tithing. I'm sure most of us have heard this. Ya kuamba, what you think you can accomplish including your tithe to the budget? It's a, it's a lie. Actually, hakunanga yesabu ambayo uneza fanyo useme, na nikiongeza my tithe, itaingia exact, ni uongo. Utabaki, utakuta, ya kuamba, utabakisha kidogo. So it means we must first honor God with our tithing because it can never add up when we include our tithing. So here God is making something very categorical. He's making actually his setting place for us. You need to be productive for six days. Go there, occupy. Go there, exploit. Go there, dominate. Go there and be productive, increase. And on the seventh day, rest. It is equally important. Mungu wakisema atabariki kazi ya mikono yangu, bado on the seventh, while I am resting, I shall get a blessing from the day. So the Bible says, and God rested. We have heard this also, uh, time in the past, Yakwamba. God rested because he had made a being that had the capacity to proceed with creation. Mungu apu, apu sema he rested after he made samaki na ndege. He never rested after he made mimea. He never rested after he made day and night. But he rested after he had created a being that had the capacity to proceed with what he had started. So what can I learn as a believer from this? After I have begun and accomplished what God had raised and called me to do. I don't have a legal standing. I don't, I should not be audacious to rest until I have raised another who can proceed with what I had begun. That's where actually the principle of succession comes in. You don't raise successors when you're about to die. You don't raise successors when maybe you have been given a death sentence. You don't raise successors when you are in your 90s, you kijua pegini in 120. You raise your successor immediately. You start raising them immediately you have accomplished. For instance, if you had started a, 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 a shop in your estate, you have, you, have, you have opened it, you have registered it, you have brought in stock. From that moment, it is complete. Now what should I do? I should start working on people whom I can even entrust with that which I had begun. People who even can bring visions that this is a good working. After six months, we should increase it in this capacity, in this manner. After 12 years, we should be in this and this region. And God rested after he had made a being, not man, but a being that could proceed with the story of creation. And these are the generations of the heavens and the earth that were created. In the day that the Lord God made the heaven and the, he the earth and the heavens, when no bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet, up, had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. Now, this is before man. And a mist was going up from the land that was watering the whole face of the ground. Now, this explains, I've mentioned it time again, Yakwamba. The reason as to why after Noah started to warn people, Yakwamba, a flood is coming. Noah, Matthew, made the ark in more than a hundred years. So you, we need to ask ourselves, 
Yani, nobody believed him. Not a single being. Why do you think that's possible? Mtu anajenga kitu mwaka ya kwanza, watatu, wakumi, wahamsini, sabini, tisini, mia. He's speaking the same words. Remember the Bible calls Noah that he was a preacher of righteousness. So he used to preach this thing. Yakwamba, judgment is coming. A flood is coming. One of the reasons as to why they never believed him is this. Because it had never rained. Water had never come from up down. The Bible says, and a mist. Meaning, down up. Used to water the up. The old ground. Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man was made a living creature. So this is the creation of man. So he made man out of soil. He made man out of something that was already generated. Now the things that God is actually calling you to create, it's not something out of the blues. He's not calling you to create a raw material. The raw material is already provided. It's already in our midst. Wazungu wataongea na waseme ya kwamba, it is closer than you think. It is actually, it might be even under your nose. So what we are being called to pick it up from, it is something that God already made, something that God already created, something that God already established. And the Bible says anything that we take, iwe mawe ambayo tumetoko kware, and we introduce the breath of God, it becomes living. Praise be to God. So anything, kitu chochote, when we take it, because God had already made it, and we introduce the breath of God, we introduce light, we introduce life, then it becomes of God. So God just picked something. He could have as well have picked matau, yangechukua kitu kingine, lakini alichukua arthi. Kaunda, 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 kasema, macho, mikono, tumbo, etc. And then he introduced himself, and it became a living thing. And from that point, hence, it was dedicated unto God. When we are doing dedications, when servants of God are doing dedications, they can even take uh, something that it, it has come from a satanist uh, 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 manufacturing company. Like Kiddi, the moment they introduce an aspect of God, pour anointing oil on it, even pray over it, even in sprinkle water and say, from now, you are set apart for God. From that moment henceforth, it becomes a new creation. So some things that we think that we, we, we are called to venture into, we need to take it slow. Kwa nini? Kwa sababu actually mungu wa metuwezesha. Hasemi tuende mbali. Kili ambacho konacho. You might be in a place where you don't have actually a lot of resources. You don't have a lot of things maybe to exploit. Like kili, the small that you have, the little that you have, it is what has capacity to become so much more. And the Bible says, and the Lord God planted a garden in the Eden, a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made up, made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I'll conclude it here. What does the Bible say? Out of the ground, the Lord God made to spring up. And the Lord God planted a garden in the Eden. Now there was nothing God made man. After God made man, God made a habitation for him. And the Lord planted a garden in the Eden, in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. The moment I was born and you were born, the next order of business of God was to create an Eden for us. We are not called so that something, and this is the example that I was using. Remember I mentioned, Yakwamba, this is a message that I preached in our Sunday morning teachings in church. And I said, Yakwamba, look at somebody like Joseph. When Joseph was called out of prison, I had a dream, interpret it for me. Mandiko Nasema, after he had interpreted, Joseph gave a recommendation, Nakasema, look for a, a, a wise gentleman, a wise person. Even if you can look for a board, wale ambao watafanya, these seven years of bounty, they don't go to waste. Mandiko haisemi, wakati Joseph alipatio yo kazi, nyumba ilijengwa. They never say that, go and build a house for this new entry. Apana, their house was already there. 
the house was already fully furnished. So the moment I was born, an Eden was already created for me. The moment you are in school, allow me to speak to you if you are a student. The moment you are in school, it means there is an Eden of, of, that has been made for you. You might, one of the worries of us students, Lee, where will I take what I am doing? Will that, is this marketable? That's the word that we normally like to use. The Bible says, yes, it is. As long as you are doing it, as long as God led and directed you to do it, then there is an Eden for you. And what does this Eden entail? God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the eyes. Where God is taking us, it's not somewhere that's shoddy. It's not somewhere that's pathetic. It's not somewhere that it's smelly, like kidney, where there is trees pleasant for sight and good for food. To tapenda mahali to menda, atoka tu nachukia, kwa sababu pengine panaka vibaya, hata tunaogopa kuonekana tukiingia hapo. Na number two, trees that have food to eat. I shall have something to consume by the end of the day. I shall have something to show by the end of the day. I shall have something to enjoy, to replenish me by the end of the day. It is interesting. Allow me to go back to the story of Joseph. When Joseph's brother had come, remember, it is during the seven years of famine. Mandiko inasema, alisema waandaliwe karamu. Sijui, a goat was slaughtered. Sijui ndugu yake ule mdogo sana, I think it is Benjamin, alipatiwa, I think, I think it is even three times, chakula. Mark you, pale inje, watu wanaenda na bakuli, wanaekewa ya yowi. Lakini dano, dani ya nyumba ya Joseph, they are eating their bellies out. Ni tuthu pikitu ina, inatembea tu huko na chuhu. Buwana asifiwe. So there is an Eden for you, there is an Eden for me. It has trees pleasant to the eyes. It shall be beautiful. Number two, there are trees good for food. God won't leave us just miserable. Praise be to God. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. We'll pick it up from there next time I pray. That this world continues to build. That this world continues to encourage you. And you shall receive your elevation from God's word. Not my utterance. Not my eloquence. Not anything that I present. Lakini maandiko higher. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom until next time.